Greetings, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to dive into a little more technical depth, uh, going into some of the, the ways in which switching battery works, the technical details of the concept, and some of the applications. Um, so staying with this slide just a little bit longer, I'd like to go through uh, a few uh, further items in here. So what you're seeing here is sort of an illustrative concept of the switching battery uh, technology. So what you have here are two sets of batteries, and we're switching those batteries between source and load. And then while they're in source uh, connected or while they're in load con connected, they can either be in series or parallel configurations, or they can be rapidly switching between series and parallel to achieve uh, some in-between levels of voltage. So that's what you see illustrated here, um, the outer cycle being the switching between load and source, and the two inner cycles being the um, series and parallel uh, switching. You see we have different switching speeds um, during each of the cycles, allowing us to have different voltages uh, when connected to load versus when connected to source. Okay, so now we'll start talking in a little more detail about how switching battery works. Um, at its heart, switching battery provides uh, a built-in modulation of a battery voltage to optimally match both the source and the load uh, that it's attached to. So what this means is that we can have different voltages while connected to the load versus connected to the source. This can take many forms, but in its simplest form, it is essentially an independent choice of either parallel or series battery connections when connected to load and source, and those can be chosen separately. So for instance, we could be connected in parallel while tied to the uh, load and series will tie to the source or vice versa, or we could have them both in parallel, both in series, whatever is um, whatever is desired, or we can even use what I described earlier as this power series connection, uh, achieving voltages in between full parallel and full series. So that's the simplest version, but it can also be more complex as needed uh, for certain applications. So um, it need not be a static voltage while attached to, to uh, load or to source. We can essentially provide modulated voltages and thereby generate arbitrary waveforms from these DC batteries. Further, we can use adaptive algorithms to enable automatic optimization of the power and the energy efficiency. So using these algorithms, we can have the system automatically adjust to achieve um, targeted levels of efficiency by adjusting voltages and adjusting um, uh, connections between source and load. This allows us to get a maximum flexibility um, of the dynamically switched battery configurations. And so um, because everything is, is essentially software controlled, and is highly flexible, we can adapt to this wide range of, of different applications. Um, further, this eliminates or reduces the need for dedicated external conversion circuitry. All the conversion is happening inside. You, it reduces what you need to add on in terms of additional circuitry, thereby saving you time, saving you uh, labor and additional uh, circuit costs for additional components. So now we'll go into uh, the pulse width modulation in more detail. So PWM, uh, you may also have seen this referred to as duty cycle modulation. What we're doing here essentially is we're modulating the width of a pulse or the, you know, the, the duty cycle, if you will, of the waveform. So in general, PWM provides a number of advantages when using it to set voltage levels. Uh, for one, you're using digital control to set analog levels. So this enables precise tuning of the voltage um, where you, it's a completely software controlled. We can add, we can very precisely set um, that voltage level and it can be made highly efficient. Uh, PWM is known for its efficiency. Um, but unlike traditional PWM, switching battery applies this technique to batteries switched between parallel and series. So when you're looking at the figure, for instance, on the right, uh, what, you're, what, what you're actually seeing when we're in series, where you know, is when the waveform is high. And when the waveform is low, we are in parallel. So we're switching between these series and parallel configurations and we're using pulse width modulation to define the amount of high time versus low time. So this allows us to achieve precise control of the output voltage at any level between um, full parallel and full series. When you combine this with low pass filtering, we're able to smooth the output quite effectively to achieve an average voltage that we're targeting. So now I'll illustrate graphically a little bit what's going on with this power series uh, approach that we are using. So in power series, as I mentioned, we're switching between parallel and series, and this essentially allows us to unlock the latent voltage between those two configurations. So if you look at the figure at the right, as the 
pulse width increases, our average voltage also increases. Um, so that's just a simple uh, implementation of PWM. But this can now be combined with a variable number of series batteries. So instead of just going, to say, between two batteries in series and two batteries in parallel or, or 10 batteries in parallel versus 10 batteries in series, you know, some fixed number, we can actually vary the, the number of series batteries adaptively or on the fly. And this allows us to achieve a multi-level PWM effect. So in the figure on the bottom right, what you're seeing is a uh, an illustration of this. So we've got voltage versus the number of batteries, and you can um, set the, the course level of the voltage by choosing the appropriate number of batteries. So let's say we're using four batteries, so we're getting this large um, potential voltage when they're in series, but then we're still using the PWM methods to do fine voltage tuning, so we're able to tune up and down to that full range. So um, we use both the coarse and the fine tuning to be able to set voltages as appropriate for any application. Okay, so now we'll, we'll look at some of the applications in more detail where you can use switching battery. So we'll begin with the most the simplest application, and this is DC level shifting. So in this configuration, we are we have DC in, we have DC input, we have DC output, but we're shifting the voltage levels between that source and that load. So this allows us to achieve optimal um, uh, charging and optimal load driving uh, under varying conditions. So we use a, a static level uh, of DC voltage while connected to the load, a different static level while connected uh, to the source. And we use two groups of batteries, as you can see here. This allows us to do simultaneous charge and discharge at the same time. So while one battery is driving, one set of batteries is driving the load, the other set of batteries is being charged from the source. In this case, we're showing a solar panel. Um, the configuration um, will continually adjust when switching between source and load. That way, the same configuration is always presented to each side while it's doing the switching. At the same time, we're able to maintain charge on all of the batteries. Okay, so the next level up in complexity when we look at um, applications is doing a DC to AC conversion, or conversely, we could do an AC to DC conversion. So what we'll discuss first is the DC to AC. So we achieve this through the multi-level PWM method that we discussed earlier. Um, now, when it's connected to the source, because it's a DC source, we can use a static series or a static parallel configuration or some um, power series combination that provides a static voltage presented to the source. But then when connected to the load, we do something very different. We do a dynamically changing configuration while connected to the load. So we use the multi-level uh, PWM method to sequentially increase and decrease the, uh, the number of batteries in series. Um, and then we use a PWM uh, uh, adjustment to fine tune that so we can smooth that curve. So um, what you achieve then is you can achieve a sinusoidal AC signal of a targeted value. Um, to match uh, standard AC uh, waveform in your local region. Uh, so this, this is similar to how a multi-level PWM inverter works, uh, but it's applied to the batteries. So we're using the batteries with the multi-level PWM effect. And so we did all this, as I described, for DC to AC conversion. And so this dynamically changing configuration is well connected to the load. However, if we want to switch it and do AC to DC conversion, the only thing we need to do is really change the timings. We need to have the dynamic configuration occurring while it's connected to the source and a static configuration while it's connected to the load. So we've just reversed the load and the source in that case. And that way we increase sequentially and decrease sequentially the uh, voltage to match um, an incoming AC wave. Therefore, all the batteries can, can be charged um, they each see their own DC signal across each battery. However, the AC input is coming directly into the system. Another application um, that uh, we have explored in some detail is uh, maximum power point tracking, or MPPT. So the MPPT technique is a, is a common method for optimally transferring power from solar cells to batteries. And um, the concept here is to adjust the delivered voltage from the solar cell to the battery to achieve uh, maximum power transfer. So if you look at the curve on the, on the right, we've got current versus voltage. 
And there's a point along, along the curve um, where uh, you achieve the maximum uh, power. And this point can vary depending on the amount of sunlight. And so there are a number of algorithms to achieve MPPT, and each of them seek to find this maximum power point. Well, these, these MPPT algorithms can be implemented directly in the switching battery circuits. And essentially what we achieve is that we get voltage matching, um, just like in any standard MPPT. However, we do it through the multi-level PWM to set the targeted voltage. And we do that directly, as I said, within switching battery. So this accrues all of the benefits of standard MPPT, including all the high efficiency that is achieved, but we do it with a smaller and a lower cost circuit than your standard MPPT. So now we'll dive in to the circuit topologies in more detail. So we'll begin first with the core cell of the switching battery. So in each uh, element of switching battery can be, can, can be comprised of these uh, individual cells. So the switching battery cell is essentially a static battery. Um, it's like your standard storage battery, but it's of course a rechargeable one. So we, it could be lithium ion, lithium iron phosphate, it could be a lead acid battery, uh, that is of your choosing. But it's combined then with a set of uh, switches. There's a number of different topologies we could use. Um, this is a common one that we implement uh, currently. So we're using four sets of switches, um, which allows us to implement both the series and parallel configurations as well as do our switching between source and load. So we take this uh, individual battery cell and then we move to a stack of these cells to create the full circuit. So what you see here is a zoom in on a few cells that are stacked and interconnected between each other. So the number of cells that we have determines our multi-level uh, PWM capability and what, what our um, performance uh, options will be in our voltage range. And we use uh, control signals to sequentially increase and decrease the series stacks or to switch between series and parallel while the remaining batteries can be connected to the source for maintaining a charge. Okay, so we first began with uh, doing some theoretical analyses followed by some detailed simulations. And then we moved into building hardware and testing it. So this is our first prototype, which we refer to as our concept demonstrator. And it serves as a test bed as well as a proof of feasibility. Now it employs uh, four batteries. So it implements a four switching battery uh, configuration. And those batteries uh, are connected to the board through these white uh, connectors on here. And in addition, we um, connect from a DC or a solar source as our input and drive a, a variable DC load as our output. Um, so this is designed to test out all of the DC uh, in DC output type of um, configurations that we discussed. And we'll be moving later into an AC version of this uh, demonstrator as well. Um, now this, this particular demonstrator has a lot of additional components because we are um, connecting uh, some additional controllers for doing uh, tracking and display. Um, so you could, you could take this out into the field and do some testing. Um, but the idea here is to display the input and output power, the input output voltages, the currents, the efficiencies. So we have a lot of other components just for the demonstration purposes as well. So that current prototype is in the testing phase and we'll soon be uh, demonstrating, uh, offering demonstrations of the prototype uh, on request. So um, we've talked a lot about the different applications that switching battery can do. But I also wanted to, to describe what some of the other things that the system can do. What can it achieve? Well, for one, we can get automatic cell balancing. Um, this is achieved through, um, through the parallel charging mode. So every time we bring those batteries back into parallel, we're automatically rebalancing the cells between them. Secondly, we can achieve input output isolation. So simply by inserting dead time between the on switches using a, a break before make type of configuration, we are able to isolate the output from the input so there's never a direct path between the two. Um, in addition, on the, uh, conversely, we can also do a make before break when we're looking to have an uninterrupted output voltage. Um, either configuration is uh, available as an option just depending on switching timing. Um, in addition, the switching battery system can provide backup pattern power. So just like all batteries, switching battery has storage batteries inside of it. So when needed, it can behave like that storage battery. So for instance, if the uh, solar input is interrupted, you know, the, the, let's say the sun goes behind the clouds, or if the AC power, the input to the system is um, turned off, 
the system can operate uh, like an uninterruptible uh, power supply providing um, the targeted output voltage that was desired just like any storage battery. However, it offers the benefit of being able to do um, that voltage uh, conversion to the output such that you're still achieving whatever voltage you want to achieve on your output, which could be either a DC value or it could even be an arbitrary waveform. And let's talk a little bit some more about the arbitrary waveform generation. So we, we discussed in detail the sinusoidal AC generation earlier, but doesn't necessarily need to be uh, a sinusoid. We can achieve any arbitrary waveform uh, using the multi-level PWM technique. It's the same method. We just changed the uh, sequence of series and parallel connections and the number of batteries in series. So that allows us to achieve virtually any waveform within the range that we have available to us with the number of batteries. So uh, what I'd like to conclude with though here for my section of this talk is to really drive home the point that switching battery creates an analog power waveform, but doing so using a fully digital control system. So because of this, it is able to achieve, um, uh, it's able to achieve noise immunity um, because it's a, a digitally controlled system. Um, because it's software controlled, we're able to get high flexibility and set the voltage levels with high levels of precision. Further, the implementation allows for a low EMI design, thereby we're not generating high levels of noise that would affect other systems, unlike a lot of other switched uh, uh, battery or switched um, uh, circuit methods. Um, next, uh, the implementation can be achieved with a low cost uh, set of circuitry, so we're able to come in and offer similar types of efficiency and performance, but with lower costs. And we are able to achieve high efficiencies using the switching battery methods, um, current simulations, are, are showing values of 95% plus uh, for efficiencies for a lot of applications.